Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part three of my Students and Parents series. We're taking students, and we're tracking their parents. And we took a database that wasn't set up great, and we're making it set up great. And everything's great, and that's great. And if you haven't watched parts one and two yet, that's not great. Go watch those and come on back. All right, so in the last video, we took our student data that had the parents in here. And we offloaded that into a junction table. All right, so now we can have as many parents for each student as we want, and vice versa, as many students for each parent as we want, which we could do before, but now we can do it both ways. Now we need to make a form to make it easy to view, edit, add, manipulate, and do all that stuff. Now, here's where most people get stuck with this. The form that we're going to make where we can pick a parent for the student, that's gonna be our subform, that has to be based on the junction table. Okay, that's where a lot of people get stuck. All right, now this will be a continuous form, right? If you look at my title slide, right, this thing here, we're gonna make a continuous form where we can pick the different parents for this student. All right, single form, continuous form. So I'm gonna use my template. I got a continuous form blank right here. I'm gonna copy and paste that, copy, paste. Let's call this my parent sub F. Normally, I'd have a parent form, too, that has all the parent data on it where you can enter the first name, last name, phone number, all that stuff. This is going to be a subform. So I'm going to call this guy parent subform. Okay, right there. Design view this guy. Now, this guy's sole purpose is to just give me the opportunity to pick a parent. All right, so I'm just going to get rid of this stuff that's in here. Okay, and in fact, we don't even need a header or a footer in this guy. We just need a detail section. Okay, now where is it getting its data from? It's getting its data from that junction table. So go to record source and pick the junction table. So every record in this form represents one record from that junction table. Okay, which looks like this. Now, when we drop this guy into the student form as a subform, that relationship will handle filtering this part. So I'll only see the parents for student one or student two or whatever student I happen to be on. That will be handled by the subform relationship, right? The, the link parent and, and child fields, right? If you're not familiar with that, go watch my subform video. Now in here, literally all I need is a combo box where I can pick a parent from that entire list of parents, all right? I almost wish that at the end of the last video, I didn't delete those combo boxes that I had in here because it'd be the exact same thing. But, oh, wait a minute. I'm a gold member on my own website. I can go download the old database. Hang on. I'll be right back. Let me go to my website, download the database right there. There's the old file. Let me just bring it over here. There's the other database, design view. I'm just going to copy one of these guys and... We'll drop it right there. Oh, look at that. There we go. That's why it's a good idea, even if you're going to delete these things, to back up your database. Keep versions, too. Keep the one you had yesterday, the day before, the day before. I usually keep three or four older versions of my database, just in case. And, yeah, I know Alex is going to try to talk me on version control. I do it myself. So, anyways, here's my combo box that I used to have in this form. Right? We can close that. We open this guy up. There's the combo box. The control source is going to be parent ID from the junction table, okay? And we no longer need to call it parent one combo. We can just call it parent combo. And I don't think I need this label in here because it's pretty self-explanatory. So we'll do this. We'll slide that over like so. We're going to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And we're going to save this guy. Let's close it and open it back up again. Take a look at what we got. All right, there we go. It's a nice continuous form with all of my parents in it. Now, when I drop that in as a subform, it will filter so I'll only see the parents for the student that I'm on, right? So design view. Now we're gonna grab you and go click, drag, drop. I'm gonna get rid of that label that comes in with it. Slide you up over here and make this as big as you think it's gonna need to be. You need three, four, five, doesn't matter. You got scroll bars too. So you can always scroll up and down, right? Save it, close it. Open it up. Oh, wrong one. Open it up. And there we go. And now you can see if I have to have Mr. Spock on here 
as a guardian, no problem. I can add as many as I want. And then when you add that record here, it creates the record for you in here. There it is right there. See, student one, parent is two. Where's the parent two? Parent two should be Mr. Spock. Yep, see? Adding records in here adds them to the table that this form is bound to, which is the junction table. Make sense? Okay. Now, can you reverse this? Can you go the other way? Can you make it so you can have the parent and see all of their children? Yeah, sure. You just got to reverse the process. It's not that hard. First, we'll start off with a parent single form. So again, I'll copy single F, copy, paste. We'll call this the parent F. Okay, and the parent F right here, this will be based on the, whoop, let's go to the forms properties. This will be based on the parent T. Okay, we'll go to form design. We'll add existing fields. We'll bring these three things in just like this. I'll use my format painter like I did before. Okay, I can delete these now. Slide these up to the left. Now, just so I don't confuse my colors, I like to keep things color coded. So on the other form, this background color was for students where I had that purplish color for parents. So I'm gonna make this guy have that purplish color, which is kind of like that. Okay, it looks good. Okay, and I will save this now. Actually, let's do that left align thing. There we go. Save this now. This is my parent F. Okay. Open it up. Parent form. Jim Kirk, Mr. Spock, and so on. Now we need to make a continuous subform for all of the students. So again, continuous form, copy, paste. This will be my student sub F. My student subform. Okay. Design view. Now, again in here, we don't need all of this stuff. We can delete it. We don't need a header. We don't need a footer. And I'm gonna set this color here so we know that it's students. Let's go with uh, that. And now I need a combo box in here where I can pick from the list of students. All right, we don't have that yet, so we gotta build it again. All right, form design, combo box, drop it in here. Get the values from a table or query from the student table. I wanna bring in, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna go student ID, last name, first name. I'm gonna rearrange them anyway, it doesn't matter. Next, right, sort by last name and then first name. Next, all right, that's what it's gonna look like. Okay, maybe make last name a little bit bigger. Okay, next, what label do you want? Doesn't matter. We're gonna delete it anyways and then finish. All right, get rid of you. Let's take a look and see what we got. Make this a little bit bigger. Let's save it, close it, let's open her up. Okay, looks good. Now I'm only seeing one record here, why is that? Well, I didn't bind this form to a table yet, did I? See, no fields available. So that's why it didn't ask me also it didn't ask me where I want to save that value to, right? All right, that's the reason why I did it that way. I want you to see this. So we're going to open this guy up. We're going to go to record source. Remember, this has to be bound to the junction table. We've got two forms bound to the junction table. We're just showing different data in each one. Okay, now this guy's still unbound because the wizard couldn't bind it to anything because we didn't pick a, a table earlier, right? So the control source for this guy, what are we picking with this list? We're picking a student, so save it in the student ID. And now give it a name, we'll call it student combo. Okay, now if I save this thing, close it and open it, you should see a record for each one of the records in the junction table. Okay, now the next problem we got here, right? We got just our last name showing in here, so let's fix that. Open this guy up, go to data, Go to row source. We can clean this up now. Again, it's only based on one table, so we can get rid of all the student T dot and all the brackets. All right, get rid of the student T and the brackets. We don't need all the brackets because we're good little access students and we don't use spaces in our field names, right? Okay, makes it a whole lot easier to read. Okay, now we're gonna do that concatenation trick. We're gonna make it 
these three fields down to two. It's going to be last name and quote, comma, space, quote, and first name. So now this becomes one field. All right, remember that? Hit OK. Go to Format. Make this two columns. And we'll make this two inches across. All right. Save it. Close it. Open it. Looks good. Looks good. Now we just got to format to get rid of all that empty space in there, right? Slide this up here. Do this. Oh, someone's beaming in. And then we'll come over here like this. Do a little bit of that. Save it. Close it. Now we can go into our parent form and drop in that student subform, just like this. Boom. See, now we can go both ways. Now we can see the parent and all of their students. And we can see the student and all their parents. There's Jim Kirk and the kids that are associated with him. There's Mr. Spock and the kids that are associated with him. You can see he's responsible for Bobby Kirk, too. We did that a minute ago, right? Student F, you can go both ways now. You can see the students that are associated with the parents and the parents that are associated with students. That's pretty cool, right? Now, once you've got this data in the database, there's lots more you can do with it, folks. You can make little events. So let's say you've got this up. You've got Mr. Spock's record up, right? And you want to be able to say, okay, let's take a look at uh, Bobby Kirk's record here. We can make it so we can double click on Bobby Kirk and it'll open up the other form right to Bobby Kirk. That is going to involve a little tiny bit of programming. We'll do that in tomorrow's class. There's a lot of other stuff you can do with this. You could make a phone contact sheet. So it's got all your parents and the, their phone numbers on it with the students, right? You can generate a report to show you that. You can set up who's the primary. There's all kinds of things you can do with this stuff. You know what? Post in the comments down below what you'd like to see me do with this data. What kind of stuff do you want to see? And if I like it, I'll add it to a future video. But we are going to do one more lesson with this. Let's see. Today's Friday, the 12th of July, 2024. We're going to do at least one more. So I will see you on Monday, the 15th for part four. So tune in Monday, not tomorrow, Monday. Tune in Monday, same bad time, same bad channel. And of course, members, you can watch it right now. Of course, yeah, okay. All right. Everybody else have a good weekend. I'm off to find some more cough syrup. And that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you on Monday for part four. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsor, Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions. They're manufacturing experts specializing in Microsoft Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. Check him out at accessexperts.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them 
I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.